Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I've got one of those uh, multi AliExpress packages and a few more things coming in the mail. So I figured let's go ahead and start a mailbag. Okay, let's see. Oh, that wasn't very good. Come on, this is a good knife. Just a uh, bad user error. All right, let me, I've got my address showing. So let me flip this over and see what I can do. Wow, there is a whole mailbag full of packages in that one bag. Uh, they say that they upgrade the shipping and they combine it together, but the reality I've seen is that it comes slower uh, when things are combined like this. But either way, I got them, so let's see what we got. Uh, I think I got something similar to these. I've been getting a lot of this type of stuff for different PCBs I'm building, but these are six-way by two female headers at an angle. Now, um, I don't like cutting female headers, uh, especially double ones. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. I'm not a savage, but... Um, you know, these things are used in a lot of PCB projects where you're mounting things between two PCBs. And I've got a couple of those kind of projects going on. And this looks like it's uh, maybe 15, 20 pieces there. And uh, nothing too exciting, but I'll definitely be using these in some projects. And uh, pretty sweet of them to put their uh, information right there on the bags. So if you're interested in them, there you go. Uh, let's grab another one. We've got... This one here, let's see. This should all be kind of small tinkery things. Oh wow, we got some uh, resistors. And these are 330 ohm. I was basically out of 330 uh, ohm resistors, especially the quarter watt ones. I just tend to like working with the quarter watt ones if I have the option uh, on most of the just standard sticking it in breadboards and stuff like that. The uh, Nothing wrong with the sixth watt or the eighth watt, but a lot of times the wires are thinner on them and it makes them make not as good a connection in a breadboard so i got 500 of these things for like two bucks uh so i never thought that i would run through my other supply of 330 ohm ones but i did so here's another 500 to get me going next up we've got it feels padded there's one particular thing i need out of this package which is why i'm opening this up before my other stuff comes in uh but let's see if we can get to this one without destroying it very well packed whoever did this one ah this is it these are 10 uh cpld i always mix, mix it up cpld clpd um they're basically a cross between a little microcontroller and a uh and something like an FPGA. It's a chip that's gonna be used for converting video. So uh, video out of old computers, video, uh, composite video, RGB video, all kinds of stuff. So this chip will go on a board that will um, be connected to a Raspberry Pi Zero, and then that will connect to HDMI, which will put all of this uh, cool video on the screen. Now, these things are relatively expensive when you get them from uh, something like uh, uh, DigiKey or something like that. And I think these wound up being around 40 bucks for 10 of these. So they're clearly the most expensive part of the project. But at four bucks a piece here versus 10 bucks a piece on DigiKey or something like that, uh, this is the way to go. So I'll do a complete video about this project and I got to solder that. So we'll see how that goes. In fact, uh, I just watched a video of, Dej of Adrian's Digital Basement where he just absolutely mangled uh, desoldering and resoldering one of these things. So it should be fun. All right, uh, let's grab another one. I was really worried those uh, boards, those little chips weren't gonna come in. So really happy to have them. All right, so uh, we have, oh, okay. So this is another set of chips and this is another one of those things that looks like they are possibly uh, used poles from uh, other things, which is really annoying. In fact, I've actually got a video in process about AliExpress sending me stuff that's marked as new and uh, it actually being used. But I mean, look at that. I mean, this did not come from one supplier. Uh, these things were clearly pulled from a bunch of other things. They've got scratches and they're different designs and all that kind of stuff. That being said, um, these chips are way cheaper from AliExpress, so assuming they're genuine, uh, maybe they'll get the job done. So we'll see. Another batch of used chips from AliExpress. That's pretty frustrating, though. Okay, got this one here, which looks like a little thing of maybe, uh, what do you think, SMD parts? SMD parts. Uh, no idea what they are off the top of my head. They look like capacitors. Um, I did order a bunch of capacitors for a project, and... Uh, so I think there's a little 0402 maybe. I don't know, I'm real bad at that kind of SMB stuff, but very teeny, teeny, tiny capacitors. Is that, let's see. 
I think there's a resistor. Is it a resistor? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but <laughs> some SMD components. I'm kind of going quickly through this stuff because I'm going to be adding some more interesting items later. Uh, all right, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. So this is part of a thing lately. I don't know exactly if I ordered... I don't know if it's a duplicate or what the deal is, but um, I have 80 different kinds at 25 pieces each of 0805 resistors. So if I'm not mistaken, I don't really understand how this how I got this twice, but um, oh look, there's a loose one. It's kind of right, in fact, it's on the outside of the bag. Look at that, it's on the outside of the bag. All right, there. Um, anyway, these are uh, 0805 and they are just a general kit for me to put into my collection. Uh, so that when I need something, I don't have to sit there and order them one off. So hopefully if I have a project, you know, I'll use 10 of them or something like that. And then once I start running out of a certain size, I'll go in there and get more. Now, I think I had to order a hundred of this for a particular project. I think there was like a replacing some resistors on some screens or something like that. But, um, anyway, so we got a bunch of SMD resistors and the last one in the AliExpress package, if I'm not mistaken, is this one. Uh, more SMD stuff. So we've got, uh, what are these? These are a hundred of something and a hundred of something else. Oh yeah, 0805, 100 nanofarad, 1206, 100 uh, ohm resistors. So I needed these 100 ohm resistors for the screens and 100 nanofarads, I feel like they were for a, uh, yeah, I think I accidentally ordered these from DigiKey and from AliExpress. I totally forgot I'd order these from DigiKey uh, or from AliExpress when I ordered them from DigiKey. But these are also for this uh, CPLD project. So uh, I'm going to have a lot of that kind of stuff. But these are cheap. They're like a buck or something like that. So it's not really going to break me in the overall cost. It just stinks to have multiple things that I don't need. I don't know. There's something about mail. I guess maybe that's why you watch mail calls. And, ah, my address came right out on top. Like, of course it did. Um, here we go. So this contains three items. I did let Amazon combine shipping on these things. Uh, we'll kind of move this one over to the side. But uh, this is something that I had in a Klein and I really wanted these extra features. This is what they call an AC line splitter. Let's just open it up and take a look at it and I'll show you what it does. So first of all, we're going to concentrate on the middle section of it. And um, this is for if you have one of these AC clamp meters like my Kaiweets HT208D, um, you can plug this into the wall and plug your device into here. And you can put the clamp meter on here. I'm probably this way so you can actually see it. Um, and you can read the amperage of the current of what is uh, being plugged in. So the idea here with this is that we have a, um, a 1X and a 10X slot. And the thought behind that is that if you're doing something normal with, uh, let's say a hairdryer or something that's got some current behind it, uh, you can put it in here and you'll get a one-to-one -one reading. But in the event that you're trying to read something small, let's just say that you have something that is 100 milliamps or something like that, and you wanna read it on a less sensitive meter, you can put it in here and your 100 milliamp um, current will read up as uh, one amp in here and because it's 10 times. And so you can actually uh, read smaller currents than your clamp meter is technically very good at. And they do that by um, wrapping this up 10 times. So in other words, like there's a wire loop around here and um, you're able to read it because they do 10 loops on this one, which is kind of cool. But then beyond that, this also has uh, one of those little things that when you plug it in here, I don't have an extension cord, Andy. When you plug it in here, you should see two yellow lights if uh, the outlet is wired correctly. And this little thing here will show you if it is not. You know, if you're getting a red light and a yellow light, then you know that your hot wire has been uh, reversed with the ground. Let me get an extension cord, I gotta show you that. So if you plug this in here, you will see the two yellow lights show me that my wire is um, wired correctly. If this was a GFCI, pushing this button should trip the GFCI. And finally, there are two holes down here for sticking your meter probes in and checking the voltage. Now I think this thing could maybe use its own video, we'll see. Um, but I think it's kind of a fun little tool. Now, it's one of those things, I feel like this is like somewhere between 10 and $20, but if you look at 
like a Klein, just line splitter is 15, 20 bucks by itself. And it will only have typically one of these things. And so the fact that you have two of them, uh, something like this runs about five bucks by itself. So just having this as one device is just kind of cool. So that's what I got. I have been going through a lot of heat shrink and uh, I really like the three to one and four to one heat shrink. And if you've never used that stuff, uh, highly recommend it. You know, it's one of those things where getting the exact right size of heat shrink can be a bit of a pain in the butt. And so having something that shrinks a lot gives you just plain more variance. Let's take a look at this stuff. Now this is not only three to one, but it has, uh, let's see if we can look down there and see it. It has a little bit of a glue inside of it. You can kind of see it's shiny just even looking down the side of that. Um, it doesn't feel like the highest quality, but it feels like definitely good enough for electronics. Uh, probably a little bit thinner than my last three to one stuff. But the idea with this is that not only will it um, shrink down to one third of its original size, but it has some glue in there that will help stop it from sliding. So it's really good for um, for anything where, you know, where you would normally use heat shrink. It's basically heat shrink, but better. So if you have the cheap kit with the two to one, I highly recommend you consider stepping up to some three to one. I also like this stuff in particular because a lot of these things are coming yellow and blue and all that kind of stuff, colors I just don't really need. Um, with red and black, I can actually use it for labeling too. And next up, I don't know what this one is off the top of my head. It's in a kind of a weird package, so let's see what we got. It's childproof. Oh, okay, cool. Is there a third one? Yeah, so I uh, I mentioned in a video, I guess in a previous mailbag video, and I mentioned in some of the comments, I don't know what happened, but um, I had a mailbag where some of the items just never made it to my shelf, and I just have no idea where um, they went. And these are some fiberglass pens, and I use these in particular. I think that's right, screw this side out. Um, I use these in particular for cleaning PCBs, especially where battery acid has gotten on them. Uh, somebody did give a pro tip. Fiberglass is some nasty stuff, so you um, probably do want to use gloves when you do that. But I got three of these things for, I think, 10 bucks, And um, you just they're kind of a little bit of a rough surface, and you can scratch away on there and pull away things like battery acid damage and stuff like that. Um, so I had originally bought a single one because it was one of those add-on items that I could bump up my purchase over 35 and whatever and get my free same day shipping. But um, not being able to find that one, I went ahead and bought three more and I'll have them around my office. Next up, we've got another Amazon one. And I may be throwing some uh, AliExpress stuff in here that I opened a couple days ago. Um, this is some chip quick solder paste and uh, I got some other solder paste recently and I actually really like it. Um, but this one in particular is a low temperature, uh, no clean solder paste. And I got this for doing SMD work uh, where I'm going to be trying to bake this stuff in a toaster oven. And so, uh, I wanted, I could have gotten this in a larger quantity, but it doesn't actually last very long. I think it lasts for about a year and who knows by the time you get it on Amazon, how old it is. So, um, you know, it's not cheap getting it in this size, but I figure for the projects I'm doing, um, you know, I'll get six months to a year out of it. And, uh, then if I find myself doing this stuff a lot, I'll step up to it. Or if I'm sick of SMD work by that time, I will um, get rid of it. But this stuff is supposed to be really easy to work with and really forgiving on those types of, um, you know, heat plate and toaster oven applications. Uh, this one's fairly heavy. I think one of these things is a birthday gift for my wife and there may be some other stuff in here for me, so we'll see. So yeah, the, uh, the biggest thing in the box was a gift for my wife, which I will, um, show you guys in a future video after her birthday has happened. Uh, but in addition to that, I did get 10 just cheap 2032 batteries. And you may say oh, I used some quality ones when I did a video about changing out key fobs. But then I also have this Atari joystick tester, which is perfectly fine for using cheap batteries. And so um, overall, I've actually had pretty good luck with these kind of things in my maker projects. 
Uh, I guess we can pull one out, and I don't have the probes for this meter sitting here, but I do have my other Kiwi's, the uh, HT118A, and um, we will open up one of these batteries and just see, you know, are we getting 3.2, 3.3 volts out of them? 3.3 volts, that's good enough for me. Um, so again, these are probably not the highest quality batteries, and I can get for like $6 or something like that, I can get four high quality ones from Amazon. But um, for these kind of projects where you're just using them in little like maker things, um, 10 of them for five bucks is a decent deal. You can get similar deals at like Dollar Tree and stuff like that. But um, overall, these have really good reviews and they're decent enough batteries. So that is the mailbag. I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you have a great day.